right, guys, did you miss me? I certainly missed you and I missed diagnosing some cars. So what we're gonna do in this video is I finally get time to work on cars this weekend and we've got one with a check engine light on. I don't know anything other than that and I don't even care if it's a loose gas cap. We're gonna video this because we need some content. So let's see what we got here. This is a 2020 Hyundai Palisade with 3.8 liter. This is owned by a neighbor of mine just down the street. And he's been waiting a couple months for me to get around to looking at the check engine light on his car. He says he's not too worried about it because it doesn't seem to have any impact on drivability or any symptoms or anything. So we are finally going to get a look at it and see what's going on. Let's start off by getting the scan tool on there and seeing what the code is. All right, we are going to use the Top Don Phoenix Smart here and scan our system. I'm actually no longer bound to these guys contractually to cover uh, their instrument anymore, but it is actually my favorite scan tool right now, I do have to admit. I still like the interface of auto ingenuity a little bit better, but um, I've got to admit this, this scan tool really is so far the most powerful one that I have. Uh, we're gonna automatically search USA. I'm going to fill this all out and I'll come back when we get to our data. All right, let's go ahead and do a smart scan here. This will check all the modules, not just for codes, but also for communication and things. Looks like, wow, is that right? Only one code in the whole car. On uh, modern vehicles, that's really unusual. You usually at least get some kind of body control code, but that's pretty cool. This should be straightforward and it is. All right. Well, sorry guys. This one's going to be a little boring. This car is going to need a new thermostat heater control. It is almost guaranteed. However, we are not just going to guess on that. We will diagnose it to be 100% sure because obviously if it turns out this is some kind of electrical problem or computer issue or something like that, we would have to swallow the cost of the thermostat heater control. And I know these things are usually about 150 bucks. So we will do our due diligence, but it's going to be pretty easy to check. Matter of fact, what I think I want to do, let's see what kind of data we have here. Um, I'd like to go and see if we can turn it on. Let's see here. Um, it does not look like we can turn electronically controlled water pump. Um, that, I don't know that this car has, but that's not our thing. And it doesn't look like we can turn this heater circuit on. So uh, that kind of sucks because I was hoping we could do that, look at voltages, and we would be able to see do we have um, control and do we have power to it and stuff. It would save us a little time. We do not have that option. Uh, let's at least see if there's any data that we could use. To be honest with you, this is kind of stupid because it will actually be way faster to not use the scan tool and just do some electrical tests at the sensor. Not sensor, heater, sorry. Um, this is not a temperature sensor. This is actually a heater uh, element. And I'm just doing this out of curiosity. Um, there are a lot of data here, 216. Um, I'm going to come back after I search through this. Well, all I can get is water temperature and voltage, and I know those are going to be okay because the temperature works. This is a thermostat control issue. The car's been sitting a while, so that temperature looks right. One of the ways that we would know that we fixed this car would be through doing this, actually. Uh, there will be some specifications in the service manual that from a cold start, it should reach a certain target temperature, usually 100 degrees Celsius, that'd be 212 Fahrenheit, within a specified amount of time if you hold the engine at a certain RPM. And of course, your ambient temperature has something to do with it. So. Uh, we could do that, or we can just look and we can prove that this thermostat is broken. So 
Right now, the scan tool really isn't useful other than to give us the direction on our codes, so we don't need it anymore. All right, well, for those of you guys that have been around for a while, this will be a little retroactive to our earlier videos. Let me get a flashlight. Where I didn't even have bidirectional control anyway, and we would just scan a code and do things like this anyway because the scan tool was useless. Now I got a $3,000 scan tool that was given to me by a company, and it's also just as useless in this particular application. So uh, we go old school here. There it is right there, I believe. Yes, that looks like... I'll give you a look in a second. I just want to be sure here. Um, but I see our outlet pipe. Generally, these things are located on the outlet pipe. And uh, that is 100% it right there. Okay, let's give you a look. All right, so on our water outlet pipe, we've got this little device here. It looks like a coolant temperature sensor. It's two wires. It is a heater element. We saw that from the code. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, give me a second here. I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. I just wanted to get the connector out right there. So there's our connector for it right there. And all we need to do is do some electrical checks and this will be very basic. All right, this will give me a chance to use my new toy here. Uh, we will give you a better view of this. Hold on. All right, get my test light on there and surprise, we have 12 volts as we can see on the test light. Remember one of my complaints about test lights is that they're subjective with the intensity. Well, this little gizmo here actually gives you the voltage. How cool is that? All right, as we saw, we've got 12 volts on the input for the circuit. So I'm very, very happy with that. We now need to verify that we've got a ground here. There it is right there. Okay, so we got power, we got ground, we are done. There is an open in that filament. We don't even need to test it, but of course, we will. I'm going to go ahead and call O'Reilly's and tell them that we need this part and see if they've got it available. I will be right back. All right, my friends at O'Reilly says that they can get the part tomorrow. So that kind of sucks because I got a little bit busy of a schedule here. So technically, really, we could just go ahead and end this video because we know we've got the evidence. But of course, we're not going to stop there. I'm at least going to take it one step further. Let's go ahead and get that thermostat housing off and let's go ahead and do the electrical test with a resistance test. We will prove that there is indeed an open in that heater filament. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, probably one of the easiest repairs ever on this channel, but one of the things we wanna go ahead and do our electrical connection test here. And as you can see, we've got this very, very, very tight opening with little, little tiny pins. You may not even be able to see them. So how are we going to do our electrical test for sure there? Well, it turns out last week was my birthday. Wait till you see what I got for my birthday that will make easy work of this. I am so excited. There it is. So my girlfriend Vicky, her sons and their partners pulled in together to get me this amazing birthday gift that I've wanted. And they were really wondering why I was so excited about this, but I've wanted this for a while. This is a complete, I want to say like 150 piece or so electrical test kit. Now, some of you guys who are really hardcore, you know that there's one from AES Wave that's very similar to this that costs something around $360 or $380. As uh, so a do-it-yourselfer, can't really justify that, but this kit is only like $150. Bucks. It's less than half the price. And I have all of these different connector ends here, and one of these is definitely going to fit the connector end for this broken thermostat piece here. So all I have to do is uh, hunt through here. We've got different blade terminals. There is what looks to be what I need right there. Yep, fits on there perfectly. So let's get another one here. 
The other nice thing about this too is if it turns out that this thermostat works, one explanation could be that we have poor connection with our connector and maybe the female terminals um, well, I, I assume they're female, um, you know, we really should ask their gender, I guess, but um, they do appear to be female to me, but that's judgmental. But the connectors that identify as female could be making poor contact with the connectors that identify as male. And one of the things that I can do is match one of these blade terminals and I could insert that into the terminal that identifies as female if it is really female though because otherwise it won't fit obviously and you can do a drag test and I'll be able to see is there just poor contact with the terminals so uh, the other thing this kit has is some little LED test lights here we actually could have used this to check our electrical in the car itself there i just chose my new test light to do that oh gosh look at this look at this i didn't even know it had this this looks to me to be a variable resistor yeah that is oh it is it's a variable resistor up to 5,000 ohms got a bunch of alligator clips and Oh my gosh, there's more than I can even go through in this thing. But anyway, uh, let's get our meter here. All right, let's go ahead and set that for continuity here. Oh, the other thing that's really nice about this, it's got these banana jacks here, and I've permanently affixed banana jacks to my meter so I can get ultimate configuration ability like that with my meter. I've been doing this for a long time now. So we can just plug this right in here and watch that circuit be open and it is never even budged the meter. All right, one thing we got to do, test our meter here and you see we would find continuity if we measured it. And if we were really scientific, we could also measure continuity across each of our individual wires here. And you see that one works and this one works. Um, I know this seems silly, but this isn't actually that bad of an idea to do this. I actually did have a time when I got really thrown for a loop when there was an opening in one of my test wires. So it uh, doesn't hurt to validate those. All right, we are done. This car needs a new heating element for the thermostat. We just replaced this part. It's about 160 bucks from O'Reilly's. We don't need any more proof than that. And I'm not gonna have time to film tomorrow, unfortunately, when the part comes in. So we've got all our evidence. This is a done deal. Bad heater element in the thermostat control here. And we are done. I will fix this car tomorrow. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time. All right, guys, we've got a little bonus video here because during the editing, I ran into the line that I had said at the beginning of the video where we're kind of going back to our roots here with the fact that the scan tool wasn't useful and we have to do our manual testing. Well, also going back to the roots means that years ago, I would be eviscerated by the viewers for not completing the scientific aspect of the diagnosis. The thing that made this channel what it is, is not so much the car repair and things like that, but the scientific process. And in order to complete that scientific process, we are indeed missing a key factor. And that is we do have to show that the new component does have continuity and that would be kind of the final thing other than of course going through two drive cycles to prove that the code doesn't come back which we won't have time to do we'll know if that happens and fails if this car comes back for another video but we're going to go ahead and open up this brand new thermostat i just picked up it's the next morning and we're just going to get this done so let's go all right once we show continuity here we don't have anything else to test because we know just from the fact we got the code, the rest of the system in the car works because it identified the problem. Get our continuity test here. There we go. We should have at least some resistance on here, I think. Yes, so we've got 15 ohms here. That's normal. This guy, of course, read completely open, so that is it. We are done. The only other thing is running two drive cycles, which is required for this code to set. 
and that would be the absolute final proof, but we won't have time to do two drive cycles. Now, so if this car comes back on another video, we know that science cannot possibly be trusted, but we know for a fact that is not gonna happen. This was our issue. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you found this entertaining. We will see you next time.